we are reading from the yoga sutras we'll be continuing with it and this will be our yoga sutra class number 27 we are studying the second chapter aphorism number 25 onwards the aphorism that we were discussing in our last uh, class that is tat abhavat samyoga abhava hanam tad drishyeh kaivalyam this is the most important verse uh, aphorism in the whole book so the meaning is tad means that that avidya or ignorance abhavat being absent when that is completely erased samyoga abhava abhava means there is absence of samyoga the junction in simple words samyoga abhava means disconnection abhava means absence hence absence of connection means disconnection of the existing connection last time that was on the 4th of july we discussed why the realized yogi would like to continue to live in the human body because the purpose of this human body is achieved so why should he or she would like to continue to live in this body we have found and discussed one cause for that and that is for the welfare of the world <clears throat> they don't need to live in the human body for their own purpose but they would live in the body for the welfare of others see the spirituality accommodates spirituality accommodates welfare of the world Shankaracharya added one more point to it. He said if no realized person would like to continue living in the human body after liberation then there will be acharya abhava there will be no teacher who would inform us about the knowledge of the reality which is transcendental. no one would inform us about what happens at the other side after the death of a realized soul death of the body of a realized soul shri ramakrishna told a story to explain this wonderful phenomenon you cannot explain why it happens but it happens and as usual he is the first one with authority to put this idea in clear terms the story he is told is once three friends were walking by a walled garden they heard loud noise coming out of, out from inside the walls they could not see what was happening there inside because the walls were very tall being curious to know what was going on inside they brought a long ladder and set it against an outer wall uh, one of them climbed up onto the wall he saw something inside and became overjoyed and he could not control himself so he jumped inside the two other friends were left below they did not know what happened to this guy so the second friend climbed up and he also did the same thing he jumped into the <laughs> garden then the last one who did not know anything about why these two jumped inside went up he was also overwhelmed seeing what these seeing the happenings inside but then 
he thought that he could share this information with others who were not aware of this joy so he came down the ladder and went to inform others the story reveals the facts of a realized person's life some get to the realization and then do not come back do not need to come back do not think that they should come back that is not at all necessary shri ramakrishna says that these yogis can live in the physical body for a maximum of 21 days then they quit the body and gets liberation final liberation but some others would come back for the good of the world and would continue to live until they think that they are satisfied by their own service for the good of the world this point has been elaborately discussed in the brahma sutras the lo- logical interpretation of the philosophy of non dual or advaita vedanta under the aphorism yavat adhikaram avasthiti adhikarikanam etc the information about the experience after realization is of vital importance for providing purpose to spiritual life and its practices so these things have been discussed there swami vivekananda analyzed the state of the yogi here he uttered some prophetic sentences we will come across them in his explanation of this aphorism he said according to yoga philosophy it is through ignorance that the soul has been joined with nature the aim is to get rid of nature's control over us that is the goal of all religions then he uttered those prophetic sentences each soul is potentially divine the goal is to manifest this divinity within by controlling nature external and internal do this either by work or by worship or by psychic control or philosophy by one or more or all of these and be free this is the whole of religion doctrines or dogmas or philosophies rituals or books or temples or forms are but secondary details the statement of the disconnection may seem to be an easy concept to be understood but it is th- this difficult not the entanglement called samyoga that has prompted the greatest of the yogic tradition to write such a voluminous book including commentaries and sub commentaries it is a difficult not why because we are a part of the not we are the a part of the not and hence it is difficult to imagine how it is possible to come out of this not without harming us like suppose mr jake has a past story of shame or disgrace which is secret you see that he continues to pursue the same type of disgraceful behavior in secret without stopping the reason is it is difficult for him to come out of such bad habits which is a secret 
the real cause is a strong connection or some yoga in a subtle way that is in secret some yoga of the yoga sutras is always a mistake at a very subtle level so it is difficult to break it and come out of it some yoga is the reason why and how we may be religious outwardly but inside there is something else occupying the space in the rest of this book we are going to learn about how to get out of such practical and subtle problems we have seen in this aphorism that hanam that word in sanskrit is the most important word in the theory of liberation in the yoga sutras the sutra is once again tad abhavat sanyoga abhavo hanam tad drishehe kaivalyam tad means that ignorance being absent that is the absence of junction that means it is a disconnection or disjunction that is called liberation or yoga this is called hanam complete destruction of the junction or connection ha is the root verb ha means to sever to cut asunder completely and that is called drishehe of the sheer kaivalyam independence liberation when you achieve this disjunction yoga means disjunction or disconnection this is called the liberation of the sheer the individual the purusha or the jiva or you me and all what is the one most important means to achieve this disjunction or hanam and to get the resultant liberation the next aphorism aphorism number 26 of the second chapter says viveka khyati raviplava hanopayah the hanopaya the means upaya of destruction of ignorance hanam is aviplava unbroken practice of viveka khyati discernment or differentiation the knowledge that is gained after practicing discernment or differentiation swami vivekananda says this is the real goal of practice discrimination or discernment between the real and the unreal knowing the purusha is not nature that it is neither matter nor mind and that because it is not nature it cannot possibly change it is only nature which changes combining and recombining dissolving continuously when through constant practice we begin to discriminate ignorance will vanish and the purusha or jiva or the self will begin to shine in its real nature omniscient omnipotent and omnipresent please let me take a diversion this is not an actual diversion but let me give some details about this fact we need to understand this hanam a bit elaborately or deeply we remember that sri ramakrishna said jato mat tato path as many faiths so many paths by this he did not say that all religions are same or identical that he did not say that would be a mistake a grave mistake then there will be no need or use trying to practice acceptance in spite of difference 
difference will be always there. The main differences that Hinduism makes and Hindu philosophies make, they are the Hindu philosophies believe in rebirth. They believe in no eternal hell. There is no original sin. There is no concept of soul being a combination of mind and body. Soul is not a synonym for the self or Atman. Even the connections mentioned in the Yoga Sutras do not confirm this idea that there is, the soul is nothing but matter, mind, subtle matter, body, gross matter. Both make the soul. But the Atman is beyond this two. It is stated in the Yoga Sutras and that is a dualistic philosophy like many other dualistic religions. It is stated in this Yoga Sutra that some yoga is a connection between the drik, the seer atman and the drishya or the seen objects. Some yoga is a connection between the atman, the seer, the conscious principle, not matter, plus the seen objects which are matter or ekatva that is called asmita is a oneness between the powers of the seer or atman that is consciousness and the power of darsana the act of seeing. Even all dualistic philosophies in the Hindu tradition speak of an atman which is beyond the so called soul or the body mind complex. In the Yoga Sutras there is hardly any importance given to this peculiar connection between the body and the mind. In respect of the concept of the ekatva or asmita between the powers of the bhokta, enjoyer, not the seer but the enjoyer, and bhoga, the act of enjoying, one can very faintly imagine that there a very dim idea of body-mind or object-mind connection which definitely breaks at death. The body-mind connection or object-mind connection will be destroyed at our death, physical death. These Hindu traditions do never swallow the idea of the body going to the other world, the body physical body, gross body, going to the other world after death. Hence the soul, that is the body-mind union of other religions, is in no way the concept of Atman in the Yoga Sutras or in Hinduism, Purusha in the Yoga Sutras. The Hindu liberation does not happen to the body-mind complex, neither to the body not to the mind also separately. It is a liberation from the body-mind complex, not to the body-mind complex, not of the body-mind complex. It is a liberation from the body-mind complex or from both separately. Liberation not to or of the body-mind complex, but from the body-mind. This we have to remember always. The dual philosophies and non-dual philosophy of Vedanta would never gain a liberation or talk about a liberation to the body-mind or of the body-mind. But it is a liberation from the body-mind. Let me repeat it once again. This is very important and of vital importance. The soul, that is the body-mind union, soul of other religions, is in no way the concept of Atman in Yoga Sutra or non-dual Vedanta or any dualistic Hindu philosophy. The Hindu liberation does not happen to the body-mind complex, neither to the body nor to the mind separately. 
it is a liberation from the body mind complex or from both separately liberation is not to the body mind but from the body mind right please remember it the aphorism implies that for the sadhakas it is an unbroken practice of viveka khyati or discernment shri ramakrishna asked his guru totapuri who was a realized non dual saint realized saint in non dual tradition why do you have to clean the brass water pot every day shri ramakrishna asked totapuri ji answered i do it because otherwise this brass pot will get rusted get dirt on it the moral of this sentence is that the realized souls live with the knowledge of discernment naturally exactly as they need to breathe naturally without consciously trying to do it the panchadashi a famous treatise of vedanta says samanyata bhavet it happens naturally samanyata na tu sadhana rupina because they do not make an effort to do it like one would do it as a spiritual practice na tu sadhana rupina what is this viveka khyati which is the upaya or way or means for achieving this unbroken api aviplava disconnection and then getting the knowledge of the purusha the differentiation or viveka khyati between me the subject and the mine or the objects that is very obvious like the differentiation between me and an apple is obvious no one would say that he or she is an apple we will not find identity like that yes that is easy to grasp this idea is easy to grasp because we are seeing things or objects that are outside us as naturally separate things two objects in front of us they are separate we can easily see them as obvious fact but the problem happens when we look at a subtle thing that connects us at a subtle level we are not talking about the difference between the subject as the body and the objects outside according to dual philosophy the subject and object difference is eternal here is another important idea one has to understand the dual philosophy say that the subject is different from the object like purusha is different from the prakriti they are eternally separate two infinities running parallel to each other never meeting into one hence we cannot try to find a mistake relating to the real separation real duality between the seer and the seen they are dual always two that is not a mistake because that is the truth according to dual philosophy even though the real duality or real separation can be a big mistake in non dual philosophy that is what has been settled in the book druk drishya viveka in that book both the differentiation and the connection are, are wrong in that book because that is a non dualistic treatise both the differentiation between the subject and object between consciousness and matter is wrong and the connection between the consciousness and matter are also wrong in here in the yoga sutras or dual philosophies the differentiation is right subject is eternally separate from the object but the connection is wrong because they are two you cannot connect them they can never be connected as one so 
in non dual philosophy both the differentiation and the connection are wrong and in dual philosophy the differentiation is right but the connection is wrong once more in the drigdrishya viveka the differentiation or duality is wrong and the connection sam yoga is also wrong in the yoga sutra is the differentiation or duality is right but the connection sam yoga is wrong that is why it has to be broken for liberation correct hence the viveka that is being taught here is a completely different kind of viveka than the drigdrishya viveka here the viveka does not take you by the hand step by step to a unity or non dual realization but it takes you by the hand and also step by step to a differentiation or some yoga bhava a disconnection it takes you to a disconnection clear once again in the drigdrishya viveka both the duality or differentiation and the sam yoga connection are wrong the differentiation is wrong because there are actually no two that you can differentiate between and there is no connection because again there are no two in here the differentiation viveka is right but the connection is wrong and that has to be broken and that is what is called kaivalyam tadrishehi kaivalyam a kaivalyam liberation achieved or realized by the purusha drisha drishi drishehi of the seer of the subject the first steps regarding the methods of differentiation or viveka in both non dual and dual philosophies are very similar let us study this process closely they are very similar because in non dual philosophy the differentiation is being understood and it is understood as far as it can go it cannot go eternally that is why it is called relative it is dependent on time it is valid for this much time and valid for this space or this place so there will be some similarity so far not eternally the yoga says that bondage or samyoga means a connection bondage is a connection bondage is an union yoga is not a union it is a disconnection between the seer and the seen some yoga between the drik and the drishya is to be broken therefore liberation means a disconnection some yoga abhava between the drik seer and drishya the seen the connection between the subject and the object has to be broken well at first we have to remove the some yoga or connection as a mistake it is a mistake both in vedanta and in dual philosophies in yoga sutra here then only yoga is achieved but if you want to follow it further into advaita into advaita or non dual practices then you have to remove the difference between the seer and the seen because that is another mistake then you cross the limits of duality in yoga the connection is real but duality uh, connection is unreal but duality is real in advaita both the connection and the duality are unreal this is the relation between these two great philosophies there is no question of antagonism between them clear now just to give you a little idea about how the viveka is applied to our own experience following both the dual and non dual philosophies and then the process of knowing and the seen objects all these things are analyzed 
knowing is an act seen objects are objects and the knower is the subject the subject uses the act to know the object these are the three things three putties three participants suppose i see an object an apple in this the i is the subject seer and the apple is the object that is seen i am using the two eyes as one instrument of seeing hence i am using a singular number for the eye of course i is a sense organ so you don't need to use plural number you can close one eye also sometimes and still see the object apple so i is the seer one eye is the seer and the object apple is the object seen now the eye can see one apple or it can see many many apples i is one but it can see not only one apple but many many apples it can see not only apples but also many other things in these statements we find that there are a few principles involved in this act of seeing number 1 we have the subject i subject i is the subject number 2 we have the objects apple and other things at this point we draw some rules rule number a 1 a the subject is one but the objects can be many and there are many the subject is one the objects can be many then b again the objects can be different according to their types their names their forms and also the objects can be far or near they can be seen today or tomorrow so these differences are there and c and all these objects should be different from the i they are not inside the i they should be away from the i so different from the i <coughs> similarly my nose is one it is the subject and it can smell an object or many objects it can smell many varieties of smells objects it can smell objects at different spaces and different time the smell or the smelly objects are different always from the nose <coughs> similarly my ear is one it is the subject and it can hear a sound it can hear a sound producing object or many objects it can hear many varieties of sounds it can hear sounds at different places in different times but the ear should be different from the sound in the similar way the skin can touch the tongue can taste etc now how many objects have we got many and of many varieties at different places at many places at many time mean many times then how many subjects they too are many we have told there are so many subjects what are those subjects the eye the ear the nose the skin the tongue these are all subjects they experience the objects so now we have got many objects and many subjects but they have to be coordinated to make a sense of how the whole event suppose there is a firecracker which bursts or blows up the flames of it is seen by the eyes the sound of it is heard by the ears the heat of it is felt by the skin the smell of it is detected by the nose and so on and so forth it is known that all these experiences are to be put together to make one sense 
to say that it was a firecracker that blew up. All these experiences by uh, gathered by the different sense organs. They were once upon a time they were one subject and many objects. Now there are many subjects and many objects. And many objects, sound, smell, touch, everything we found in this crack firecracker. And they have been experienced by different subjects. So how do we know that it was a firecracker? Because all these qualities have to come together to make a firecracker. But they were experienced by different subjects. It was seen by eyes, not by ears. It was heard by ears, not by eyes or skin or tongue. So the ears, the eyes, the nose and other sense organs cannot. They cannot communicate with each other. What the eyes have seen cannot be known by other sense organs. So when the tongue says that I have seen that person, tongue has no right to say that because tongue has not tasted it and it is seen. And if it is seen, it is seen by the eyes. How does this tongue fellow say that it, I have seen the thing? It is an absolute nonsense. And that proves their limitation. Then who connects all these different experiences of different subjects? Different experiences of different objects by different subjects. That connector should be one. And that should be the subject. And then the earlier subjects like ear, eyes, nose, etc. They become objects now. And they should be different from the subject. Yes, that is the mind that connects all these parts of experiences of different subjects and makes a total one sense out of all of them. Now see, the mind is different from the earlier subjects and the earlier objects because the earlier subjects became objects now. But then for whom does the mind make the sense out of the different partial experiences of the sense organs? For whom? And again, the mind itself is not the same always. It is changing with changes in its vrittis. That is Yoga Sutra. Mind is not the same always. It is changing and a changeful thing cannot be the subject then the mind must be of different types. Behind the mind there has to be a knower who detect the changes in the mind. That should be one, the subject, and should be different from the mind. The mind becomes an object now. Hence, as we have discussed earlier, the self or the Atman is liberated from both the body and the mind, from the body and the mind, from the soul. The self is liberated from the soul and also from the misinterpretation of it. Right? We do not make a mix up between the soul, that is body-mind complex, and the Atman, the consciousness. The soul and the Atman are not one and the same. Rather, they are completely different. Clear? And according to non-dual Vedanta, one has only relative existence. This clear and continuous knowledge of differentiation is the cause of the disconnection or liberation here. Sangyoga Bhava Hanam by this continuous knowledge, the ignorance or wrong knowledge or mistake is removed. And it is removed forever. That is, it will not pop up anymore. And that is known 
from the behavior of the people of realization who would continue to live in this world after realization otherwise there is no proof of it hence hanam means both the viveka khyati means knowledge gained by discernment and its unbroken continuity of viplava in this life itself it is not only stopping the wrong knowledge but rooting out the wrong knowledge completely now suppose the realized soul continues to live in this world as we have seen earlier they do not have any purpose of their own but they live for the good of others the next sutra or aphorism narrates the details of the realization experience of such a yogi and also those who have reached the culmination of yoga we will read that sutra that is aphorism number 27 of the second chapter tasya saptadha pranta bhumi hi pragnya tasya of that yogi pragnya the knowledge saptadha is of the seven fold is of seven fold pranta bhumi hi the highest ground the expression of pranta bhumi pragnya means that is the highest or end of knowing our knowledge our search ends the idea is whatever was there whatever was there to be known has been known hence the knowledge is whole knowledge that brings the search to its culmination or to its final end this complete knowledge includes knowing in its seven different forms called seven planes or bhumis the first bhumi prathama bhumi here the chitta or suppose the mind has discontinued forever from material search learning that temporary objects are causes of suffering second bhumi or plane is by the nirodha samadhi hanam means complete destruction of the junction of connection or connection has been achieved by this final samadhi nirodha samadhi what is it we have already learnt about it in the yoga sutras first chapter yoga means the second aphorism says chitta vritti nirodha nirodha means end easy easy language yoga means nirodha complete end of all the modifications or vrittis of the mind the samadhi is called asampragnyata samadhi which is called nirodha samadhi that brings complete cessation or end of the chitta vrittis and that is why it is called nirodha samadhi clear then the tritiya bhumi the third plane by this pragna or knowledge the effort of the yogis to know the ultimate reach to know the ultimate end of their sadhana is experienced without leaving any lingering doubt then the fourth bhumi plane is not only that this uninterrupted knowledge of differentiation and disjunction also stops the effort to do good karma for the yogis own benefit good karma produces merits punyam good results it cleans it, it uh, removes the impurities purifies the mind this purification helps a spiritual practitioner to reduce bad impressions of the mind a realized yogi does not need it any more for his or her own purpose these four types of pragnas or realizations that are together called vimukti freedom from 
that are called together vimukti or uh, karya vimukti freedom from spiritual practices karya what you have to do the next three now four are gone now next three planes or levels are called chitta vimukti freedom from the mind itself from the three gunas finally we will come to that the following three will be the end prantaha pranta bhumi pragna it said the end of everything before one attains the final liberation called kaivalya one's ownness one's ownness i am what i am i am the last three pragnas or wisdom are that is the fifth one is fifth plane the intellect or buddhi has been fulfilled with the experiences of bhoga and apavarga we have learned this you know the what bhoga and apavarga are the samyoga or connection happens due to an error or mistake it happens between the subject seer and the seen objects that is the aphorism number 17 in the second chapter the objects are meant for the bhoga experience of bondage and apavarga liberation of the subject so bhoga and apavarga the seen objects are meant for giving us both giving us bondage and liberation and then aphorism number 18 in the second chapter it is said that bhoga is proved to be useless when one gets liberation not before that similarly liberation brings bhoga to an end it is just opposite way to look at it the direction of the arrow moves from bhoga to apavarga not the other way around then the intellect is also proved to be not necessary because it has fulfilled its purpose then this this buddhi has a beautiful name charita adhikara buddhi the intellect is called by this technical expression in sanskrit charita adhika charita adhikara the intellect has achieved its culmination charita of its pursuit adhikara then the sixth one is sixth bhumi sixth plane the same intellect will not wake up again for this yogi this is called nirodha eternal end it is like a stone that after falling from the top of a mountain <laughs> does not go back to the top any more the qualities or gunas and effect of the intellect like the happiness misery and delusion will not arise again because their play or games are over forever these are not the trigunas satvarajastamas they are far away from us now these trigunas can never be lost because <laughs> they are the prakriti drishya and they will remain eternally there you cannot destroy them you can get rid of them by being by achieving this disjunction that is duality then saptama bhumi seventh bhumi seventh plane this is realized this realized yogi is guna sambandha atita is free from the three gunas here after that it becomes self evident pure and self sufficient while that person will be still living in this world jivan mukta when this yogi is finally released from the bondage of the body he or she realizes the state of kaivalyam the freedom of the purusha from the bondage of the three gunas or prakriti this is yoga sutra when the state of nirodha is achieved then the purusha is called a jivan mukta that's what we are learning now they are called the jivan mukta because even though they continue to live in this world of prakriti they are not touched or attached to or by by or to the suffering of bondage and rebirths and deaths they are untouched after their death they attain freedom from the body itself 
and that state is called videha kaivalyam let us look at the need for explaining the seven stages of this wisdom or knowledge produced by discernment suppose you lost something and searching for it you got it what happens thereafter the first four stages or bhumis are your search in probable places ends your search in improbable places also ends your searching process itself ends and all these things or processes stop because you got the thing your purpose is fulfilled and the last three your all efforts of finding it is stopped you will no more get into the process of the search you are free from the worries produced by loss of the thing you feel relieved again why is this explanation of the experiences of a realized soul some religions do not explain the nature of these spiritual experiences or excellences it is not the experience of a mythical heaven but a real self knowledge some like buddhism would not have this positive experience of the atman or maybe their philosophies do not allowed do not allow refreshing the doctrines with fresh ideas hence their experience of realization or nirvana is a negative experience within the scope of the process of ending the suffering within the sadhana but what is the experience of the nirvana what is positively achieved after ending the suffering anatta there is nothing no atman nothing existing some people say what remains after the end of suffering means in buddhism cannot be explained by words that is why it is said like that that is what buddha meant when he kept his mouth shut as he was asked a transcendental question whenever he was asked a transcendental question he kept his mouth shut well that is not the view of the technical buddhistic philosophers that is what sri ramakrishna alone has said and many find it easy to quote it as the teaching of buddha so today we have come to the end of our time we will stop here a little bit more explanation will be given next time about this but we will stop here with our chanting om once om